Hey, hey, I am Lisa and today I'm going to share with you one of my favorite midweek recipes. It is a spinach, pumpkin and chickpea curry. It's actually vegetarian, it's also vegan and it is bloody delicious. Over the years I've made this recipe and it used a few pots and pans and the oven and the stove and you have to cook this ahead. And today I'm experimenting with you by my side to see if we can make it in one pot, in one go. So let's see if it works. Hopefully it will, fingers crossed, because then we'll have something fantastic to share with friends and family going forward. All right, let's go through the ingredients that we need for this delicious curry. Starting with just a bit of, I've got some grapeseed oil, an onion, spices, I have ground coriander and ground cinnamon. I've got some curry powder. I have pumpkin, which is cut into big pieces and I'm using um, Jack or Kent pumpkin, which is really my favorite, but you can use any pumpkin that you like or squash. I have some chickpeas, which have been soaked overnight in lots of cold water and then drained or you can use chickpeas from a can, but just make sure you rinse them really well and drain them before using. But I love dry chickpeas soaked overnight. Sorry, just had to do that. <laughs> then I have, of course, some spinach. You can use um, silver beet, you can use cavolo nero, but I'm using baby spinach, which I'm going to put in just at the end because it cooks super quickly. I have some coconut cream. Yum, some red chilies for garnish at the end and a lime for its juice towards the end. So that's everything. So let's start. Firstly, the experiment part. So, sorry, I've got chickpeas stuck in my teeth. I used to roast the pumpkin in the oven beforehand, but that needed a whole roasting pan. So what I'm actually gonna try to do is use the pot that I'm cooking everything in. And this is a, um, casserole fry pan thing, which I absolutely love. It's got a lid that fits, nice, that fits nicely on it. And that's what I'm using. So let's turn that on. I want that to get really hot because my first step is going to be to coat the pumpkin in oil and spices and then fry it really quickly in the pan because I want to brown just the outside and then I'm going to take it off and continue with the next step. So in here, I'm going to put in my my oil and just the ground coriander and cinnamon and I'm just going to make sort of a paste oh, and the salt and the salt if you want the measurements it's going to be in the description under the video okay so I'm just going to make a lovely little spice paste with all of that and then I'm going to toss my pumpkin squares or pumpkin cubes in that mixture you know, a bigger bowl would have been better and then you just do a lovely toss. But of course I've chosen this one. It doesn't matter, we'll get there. All right, so I'm just gonna toss it. Probably easier to do with my hands, I have to say. So let me just get in. Okay, perfect. Hands are really useful. Okay, yeah, looks good already. So you see what I've got? I've got lovely, well-coated pieces of pumpkin. Now I've got to go just wash my hands. I'll be back in one second. Just stay in here washing my hands. And those of you who know me know that I do love my chucks. Okay, so this pan is getting hot. It needs to be hot because I want to put the pumpkin pieces in and you know I want to hear that sizzle. All right, so let's be patient and we'll wait. So not patient, that's the funny thing. No, not yet. And I'm not gonna dump them all in at once. I'm probably going to do half at a time because dumping all of those pumpkin pieces in will just reduce the heat straight away and they're gonna stew rather than, I guess I want them to fry in a way. I want this oil to be really hot when it hits the pan. So let's just be patient. It's a beautiful autumn day here in Sydney today. You can see the sun is streaming in through the window and it's just gorgeous. 
it's probably about 17 degrees and it's just one of those lovely days walked my dog walked my dogs this morning sun was shining it was actually a beautiful one all right how are we going okay and I want to put them down with a flat side down because I'm just trying to get color on these pieces so I'm going to put about half of them in and they're really oily so that's great that will help them fry nicely I'll put half the pieces in and I'm just going to cook them until they're brown and then give them a toss you know I could be really really pedantic and over meticulous and fry every side of every piece but that's going to take too long so I'm not going to do that I'm just going to fry one side try to be patient try to turn them over to so two sides are nice and brown because you know the brownness adds color but it also adds that amazing flavor that really adds I think another level to anything you're cooking I'm just going to grab myself some tongs Okay, be patient, Lisa, be patient. I probably should like zoom you through this part of the video rather than make you stand there or sit there while I stand here and brown the pumpkin. But let's see how we're going. I just want to show you one and then I'll fast forward to the rest. Of course, I'm impatient. So again, really hot pan, really, really spiced oiled pumpkin, really well oiled and spiced pumpkin. So you can see that, that's what I want. I want that color. Okay, so it's happening and I'm just gonna turn the pieces over. I'm not trying to cook them through because they're gonna cook in the curry because I want them to soak up the coconut cream and the spices in the curry. So this is just to start them off with a bit of extra flavor on the edges and color. Okay, yeah, these are already looking great. You see, that's a goodie. Love that one. And as soon as they're done, I'm just gonna put them back onto that plate that I had them on. You wanna just stand here with me? We can just keep chatting if you like. Um, I can tell you that I have just, we've just, uh, dropped the final episode of series one of Walking Up an Appetite, uh, which was martinis and snacks. And I absolutely loved doing the whole 10 episodes. I enjoyed them. I hope, you've, I hope you've had a chance to watch them. If not, they're on the YouTube channel and they're there for the watching. All right, so that's great. I'm gonna take those out and just put them onto a plate. I could have taken them a little bit further, of course, but I'm impatient because you're just standing there and you know, and I'm just talking to myself here. Okay, let's go again. I really want to hear that sizzle, right? To hear it. Okay, and make sure the pieces are in one layer in the pan. I'm just going to put the extra oil. Because it's got all that, all that spice mix that I don't want to lose. All right. So again, they're on one side of the, of the little blocks that I've cut it into, and I'm just looking for color, and um, just I want it to look like it's really been well seared. Just gonna wash my hands again, because they're all sticky, bear with me. I know you can't smell this, but it smells really good. Have you ever met anyone more impatient than me? I know I should just be patient and wait, but I'm really not. All right. And I know that I can't forget to talk to you while you're all standing there watching me. I can't imagine that standing watching someone turn pumpkin pieces is really enthralling. So I will try, try to remember to talk while I'm doing it. Sometimes I just even forget that um, 
we're filming this. Oh, these look so good. I really wish you could smell them. Have a look. So these are the pumpkin pieces with ground coriander, cinnamon and salt and some oil. All right, so great. And remember, they're still really hard because I don't want to cook them yet. I want to just sear them. So as soon as they're out, I'm just going to pop them over there. Now I'm sort of guessing all of this because um, normally, as I said, I do them in the oven. I roast them at a high temperature for 20 minutes, but I want to cook them in the curry from scratch or from that point on. Okay, so now we're going to pop the onion in to this pan. I'm going to put a little bit more oil because I did use it oil. Oil. <laughs> I did use it oil. I did use it all. Just gonna put a little bit here. I'm using grapeseed, love this brand, Azalea. It's my favorite. If you're in Australia, you can get it from most of the supermarkets. All right, so I just give that a toss. I've got my onion cooking in some oil. And as soon as the onions have started to soften a bit, and I don't need them super soft, like I'm cooking a pasta sauce or something. I don't mind if I keep a bit of their crunch, but I don't want them to have a raw taste. So I'm gonna keep cooking them till that raw taste is gone. All right, so onion. And this is the plan, okay? The plan is I'm gonna throw the curry powder in in a minute, and I'm gonna cook it with the oil and the onion until it's fragrant. And then I'm gonna to toss in the chickpeas and the coconut cream. And I'm gonna put the lid on. Now I'm gonna guess the chickpeas are gonna need about 45 minutes, I'm guessing, to cook. Um, maybe less. So I'm gonna cook them for about 20 minutes. I will switch you off, don't worry. You don't have to sit there for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to taste one. I'll get you back then. And then we'll add the pumpkin. We'll finish cooking that for the last 20 minutes of the chickpeas and then we'll taste and season and see how we're going. That's the plan, let's see if it works. All right, so this, these onions are cooking nicely. The only way to tell if they still taste raw is of course to taste them. No, they still got a little bit of a bite, but they definitely don't taste raw. So I'm ready to go to the next stage. Got my curry powder quite a lot of it. This is the smell I just love. So what we're trying to do is to cook the curry powder in the oil and the onion. Sorry, to cook the curry powder with the oil and the onion. I'm gonna turn that down a bit now. Just until it's quite fragrant, which it is, but my pan was very hot. Now, I'm gonna throw in the chickpeas. Because now I also want to coat all of those little babies with this beautiful, beautiful curry spiced oil and onion mixture for all my chickpeas. I want you to know that I've never done it this way before. I am just winging it. Obviously, if it doesn't work, I'm not gonna show you this video. Or maybe I will. Maybe it won't work. You'll just have to wait and see. All right. That looks pretty good, I've got to say. If they were cooked, I could just go and eat that now. But they're not. So let's see how we go with this. So I've got my coconut cream. Oops. See that? It is all over the floor. I thought I could put this in a mixer, but that didn't work well. All right. So let's see how this works. Well, that was not good, because I now have coconut water. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's all over the floor. I think my dogs will like coconut water and cream, I'm not sure. All right, so I'm just gonna stir this. Let's see if this works, okay? Let's see if this is going to work. And what I wanna do, yum, that coconut smell is so good, is stir it until, obviously, those creamy bits are dissolved, or mixed in, I should say. Yeah, and I'm gonna turn the heat back up again. I wanna bring it to the boil, and then I'm going to turn it down so it's just a simmer, like a lively simmer, because the chickpeas need to cook. So 
So as soon as it comes to the boil, which will be in a moment, I'm going to put the lid on and turn it down. But you know what they say, a watched pot of chickpeas never boils. So I'm not gonna look at it. I'm just gonna have a sip of tea and pretend that I'm not caring whether it comes to the boil or not. I can hear it, it's boiling just about. You know, I learned the most interesting thing during um, the lockdown videos that I did. Someone described the way water boils as laughing. So it's either laughing, which is boiling, or smiling, which is like just a little, a little simmer, and then anything in between. So laughing hysterically is a full, huge boil. This is probably just starting to smile, and I want it to be smiling broadly, let's say, when I put the lid on. Okay, how's that? No, laughing, I mean. I want it to be laughing when I put the lid on. It's boiling around the edges, but I want it to be boiling across the whole thing. And I want these chickpeas, which are currently crunchy, right, and not cooked at all, to be cooked. The, the boiling is, is moving across the whole thing. This pot is definitely starting to laugh. It's giggling. I think this analogy is good. Do we like it? Are you going to start using it at home? I've got to really improve my use of it. I, I know that. All right, that's good. So now the lid's going on. I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to come back in 20 minutes and we'll check it. See you then. So it's been 20 minutes. Did it go fast for you? And let's see how they're going. They won't be ready, but I just want to get a sense of how fast they're cooking. Remember, dried chickpeas can be different one batch to another batch, depending on how long they've been stored for in the, sh in the shop or your pantry. So you'll have to taste and work it out. Hmm. Getting there. Not quite there yet. So the question is, do I put the pumpkin in now I don't want the pumpkin to go too mushy so if I put the pumpkin in now and the pumpkin might take 15 or 20 minutes to cook and the chickpeas aren't ready then I'm in trouble because I've got to keep cooking the pumpkin right so what do you do so what I'm going to do my gut feel is this is going to need another 15 minutes before I put the pumpkin in so let's go 15 minutes we turn it up a tiny bit so it's at a uh, lively simmer and I'll come back to you in about 15 all right, it's been another 15 minutes since, since I tasted and let's have another look. Oh, the smell from this is so good. The curry, the coconut, just delicious. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna eat all the chickpeas before the curry's ready, it seems. Hmm, okay. It's good. So they really have started to soften quite a bit. It's been a total of 35 minutes and now I'm going to add in the pumpkin. And remember the pumpkin now also has more spices on it. So that's just going to add to the complexity of the flavor. Let's put it all in. Just gonna give that a really good stir. I wanna coat the pumpkin in the beautiful coconutty curry sauce that's formed okay it's definitely going to need a bit of salt i haven't <laughs> excuse me wanted to salt them the chickpeas just yet um i heard and i don't know if it's true that if you salt them too early they become tough i'm not sure if that's right or not hmm, that's good let's get a bit of salt I think they're really cooked enough to warrant salting, I mean. Okay, we're gonna salt. Now it's up to you if you like it spicy. I'm gonna take one bird's eye chili. And I'm just going to slice it like that. I don't really want to um, make it too spicy, but I just want a hint of spice. So I'm just gonna pop it in and that's it. And now I'm going to cook that. Just like that again, bring it up to the boil again. 
as soon as it starts boiling or live at a live simmer I'm going to put the lid on turn it down to a simmer and let it cook for let's say 20 minutes and then I'm going to come back again and do the last step which is putting in the spinach giving it a taste and a squeeze of lime oh, that is beautiful okay lid on make sure it's on tightly because we don't want all that liquid to evaporate and I will see you in about 20 minutes okay so it's been 20 minutes it's quite a bit on the bottom I should have given it a, a stir during the thing because it's all caught on the bottom but let's see if we can fix this This is not ideal. I'm going to be honest with you, this bit at the bottom that's caught. You know, I smelt something, not burning, but it's really brown. But you know what? It'll add flavour, right? So let's just toss this round. Okay, and you can see the pumpkin's cooked. It is starting to break up. So I don't even need to taste it, really. I've tossed through that burnt bit, of, that brown bit. I'll just make sure it's not burnt. No, it's not burnt at all. All right. <clears throat> Chili. That actually is very delicious. All right, so now you can see it's just, it's all cooked. I'm going to add in some spinach. I'm gonna squeeze a lime. I thought the lime would just perfectly juice into the saucepan, but of course it needs a bit of an effort. And you could put a couple of limes, really. It would be lovely to have that lime juice throughout. This is not a particularly juicy lime. Okay. Let's give it another toss. And that's it. That is dinner done. Quite happy with that. I'm going to put the lid on. Let it finish cooking just for a few minutes. If you find that it is a little bit dry, and maybe that looks a little bit dry, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. If that looks a little bit dry, which that one does, because it perhaps was a bit hot, I'm just gonna put a bit of water in. Just to revive those canned juices. And that's looking better. Okay, I'm just gonna go and heat up some rice and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna eat it for dinner tonight. Okay, I've got myself some freshly steamed basmati rice. This looks fantastic. Have a look. Really happy with that. Even with the bits that caught on the bottom. Oh, made a big mess today. Yum. This is really, really good. I'm so happy with this. If you like extra chili, as I do, you can just cut a few slices of this one, which I'll do. Okay, I'm just slicing some chilli on top. And look at that, just fantastic. Absolutely delicious. What I forgot to say is now's a good time to taste it. Season it, might need a little bit more salt. Add as much as you wish, wish, sorry, and then leave it. It'll also be great tomorrow. That is my spinach 
pumpkin and chickpea curry, perfect for a midweek dinner and all done in one pot. Bon appetit and happy cooking.